Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making Magic Colour Slide Art Journal page, which is based on an old card making technique. Now this is showing you the magic beforehand. So it starts off with an uncoloured image and it goes up into a coloured detail image and it slides up out of your page. So it's creating sort of a magic effect. Looking at the quote, and it's still magic even if you know how it's done. So I'm about to take you through how this is done. First of all, you need to start off with two images. One image needs to be on some white cardstock of some sort. The other needs to be on some clear acetate. Now I've done this in A4 size and I've used three um, printables from James Bur Burke Luke Creative through his Patreon site. Um, but you could use stamped images to do this. That's what I used to do when I used to do this as a card and just stamp out two images. The other piece of acetate is one that I can run through my laser printer, but again, if you've got some permanent ink, you can just stamp onto some acetate. I do suggest if you're doing that stamp towards the middle, because you actually need a little bit more area around um, your stamped image um, to get this technique to work. So all I'm doing is um, painting my image, please excuse my head, using the handmade acrylics from Designs by Rachel Beth and they're the most amazing um, watercolours I've ever used. Um, I've never used handmade watercolours before, I have to admit, but just the, the sparkle and the shimmer in these are just beautiful. And the cute little paintbrushes I've got, my mum actually bought for Ikea for my daughter and I may have purloined them before she actually got to them and they're just perfect for doing this, got a gorgeous tip on them and they were dirt cheap. So I've printed um, this image out onto just some normal copy paper which isn't brilliant for doing watercolour I have to say. If you could print it out onto some thicker cardstock or some watercolour paper it would work much better. And because this paper is so thin, I have to remedy this later on by um, sticking some more cardboard onto it, which causes its own issues in the end. Um, but if you've, if you've got something slightly thicker that you can run through your printer, that would be great. If you're stamping it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just, I didn't have the right colours for the hair in the watercolours I was using, so I got my Peerless watercolours out to colour the hair. If you haven't used them before, it's pigment put into a cardboard. I have no idea. It's magic. This is all about magic, this uh, art journal page. And you just add water to it and you just get this flood of pigment onto your brush. They're, again, mind-blowing. I got them a few months ago. I'd never come across something like it before. And, yeah, it blows my mind every time I use them because it's, it's just like magic every time you add water to it. So I've coloured in my images and I wanted to colour in the background um, something other than just the white. So in my watercolour palette I've got some Daniel Smith watercolours, Kyanite Genuine and Moon Glow that I'm using um, on the background. Now I've made that little palette up myself. Um, I've actually got the tubes of paint and I find it really difficult to use watercolours from a tube because I've always put out too much and never use it up. So from an Eckersley's I got some blank palettes or um, clear palettes and I've just put a little bit of the tube out into the palette, let it dry and I've got my own little watercolour that I can top up whenever I need to. And that works really, really well for me. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure people who have got much more watercolour experience than me may find that they can use the tubes and it's not an issue. So I'm just going in with a heat gun and heating the image and making sure it's um, dry and you can see the shimmer on, on that. I'm going in with my white gel pen just to add some highlights. So this technique I did about 20 years ago. I used to do lots and lots of these and basically what it is is sandwiching two images together and putting them between a hidden pocket. Now this was just having a go to see if I could get it done in my art journal page. So there was no real measurement 
uh, when I did this, which didn't work out perfectly, I have to say. When I was doing a card, it would be very carefully measured. So this is just the technique. I'm sure that you can run with it and, and do what you will. What I'm doing now is I've got another image that I um, printed out. And I'm going to turn this into a mask. I wanted some stamping in the background, but obviously I painted my images and I didn't want to go over it with the stamp pad. So I'm just roughly cutting out around the edge of the image. And what I will do is place that over the top of my coloured images and then I can stamp in the background and it will protect my um, coloured ladies. So again, masking is a really awesome technique to, to have in your arsenal when you're using stamps or doing images. If you're using small images, post-it notes are fantastic because they've got that little bit of um, sticky on them that's removable so you can stick it over and it's not going to move anywhere. With this I had to just hold it really carefully to make sure it didn't shift. So I'm just using some archival ink over in the background and stamping out my image. Just making sure that it's not shifting too much while I'm doing this. That head is really wobbly. So you can see there that the image was protected. And now all I'm doing is lining up my acetate to make sure that it lines up perfectly. And you can see by putting the acetate over the top, that's like re-stamping the image over the top using a um, stamp positioner. It just means that you get that really nice crisp black line. So in my art journal, I've chosen <clears throat> three pages in a row that I can work on. This middle page of the two pages, I've just cut a little slit up the top. And that's going to give me a pocket to pull the image here in and out of um, the journal. So what I'm doing is making sure I'm lining up my acetate really, really carefully so it matches exactly. And now I'm trimming down the edges so it will fit into that pocket. When I did this, and you'll see it later, I, I didn't measure and I really should have and it didn't work as, oh, sorry, I left the image a little bit too big um, to pull in and out. It was a little bit um, tough to get it to move in and out. So if I did it again, I would probably resize the image just down a little bit so I've got a little bit more room to play with. As you can see when I'm marking this out, it's a very thin um, border where I'm going to be working. And I would have, I think it was like half an inch or about a centimeter and in reality probably having the same width that I had at the top the whole way around the border would have made it a lot more secure and a lot easier to move the image in and out. So I've just drawn out where I'm going to cut out my window and then I started painting which is a really dumb idea because I should really cut it out first so I could see the lines that I was actually wanting to cut out. So I realized what I was doing and cut out my lines. When you're doing this in your journal, please make sure you've got your cutting mat in between. Not Lots of times when I'm doing things like this, I forget and start to cut and I cut through a few pages. So just, you know, I'm sure you're much more on top of these things than I am, but I forget every time. So now I'm just painting out my border. I'm just using some black gesso because I know that will have a nice matte finish. <clears throat> and I put some of the, just a gel print, of gel print in the background. What I'm doing now is I want to have some sort of coloured image in the background of my acetate just to hide that coloured image. And I'm running it through my Xyron machine which makes everything into a sticker. So it's a great way to make sort of an A4 sheet into a sticker without having to use lots and lots of double sided tape. Um, they're still available and they're a really handy tool to have. I'm edging the sides of my um, cut window with a black marker. Again, that just hides the cut edge. It makes everything look a little bit more professional. So this, again, you've seen this page a few times in my journals recently. It's one of my cleanup pages and I've just copied it onto some um, tracing paper or printed it onto some tracing paper and stuck it into my journal just to give a sort of coloured background that isn't too busy, to, so to speak. I'm using the red liner double sided tape and you can see here that even though I've put it right at the edges, it doesn't give me that much room um, in the window to slide something in and out as a little pocket. 
and that's why having a wider um, border of frame would have been really really handy so just at the top of the page I'm just painting it black because that will be seen when you're pulling things in and out and again I'm keeping that pocket effect and putting the double sided tape around those three edges as well so I've got a pocket with a hidden piece in between that I can slip the coloured piece in one side and the acetate piece in the other. Going back to the front page just to finish it off and painting that page black and just using the blending tool to do that. Now as I was doing this I realised that just having copy paper was going to be a little bit too flimsy so I've just stuck this down onto um, some white cardstock but in retrospect that actually made what I was doing too thick and it, again it caused a little bit of issue of movement going in and out. So this is me threading it in. The acetate's going um, over the top of the coloured side and the coloured image is going down the back pocket. It's quite hard to explain or to visualise but hopefully by seeing how it's constructed you can kind of understand where it's going. Um, so the acetate is going in the front where the coloured tissue was and the watercoloured issue is going behind that in that second pocket. And you can see me sort of just trying to tuck things under. I had to bend up the um, frame a little bit just to help it move in more smoothly. So I've got the piece at the top sticking up a little bit and that's really important so people can see that it's actually an interactive element to your journal that they can actually move and, and um, pull it up and pull it down. You could maybe cut a little tab into the top as well to show that or write something at the top to pull here um, <clears throat> to show that you, you need to do something. So by choosing the background I did behind the acetate, um, it gives that coloured effect but the bodies of the women aren't the focus whereas when you pull it up that they they suddenly become the focus and I suppose it's having that real contrast between the two is where the magic comes from so I decided I need to have a quote on this page and decided I just wanted it really simple and black and white so it's still magic even though you um, even though you know how it's done I thought that was just perfect for this page and it's a quote from Terry Pratchett which I forgot to write at the bottom and I have I've written in since into my journal so this is just a technique I use for my lettering quite a lot these days. Write it out in your normal handwriting and then just go back with your pen again and put in the swirls and bits and pieces afterwards. And I find it's a really easy way to do some lettering because you've got the correct letter shapes. If I try and do this sort of thing as I go, I kind of get confused with my letter shapes, which sounds ridiculous, but I sort of think, oh, where does that bit go? And then it all starts to look a bit wonky. So if I've got it written out to begin with, I find it's a lot easier for spacing, sizing, and then I'm just zhuzhing it up at the end. And I'm just using a white Sharpie um, in the medium point and then the fine point to do this, but you could use any sort of pen to do it. So that's pretty much the entire project. Um, as I said before, this is an old card making technique. I'm sure it has many different names and iterations. I know it as the magic colour slide card. Um, and I'm sure if you look on YouTube, you'll find lots and lots of examples of it. It's a great one to put on a card front, particularly for kids. They love that interactive effect. But I love the fact I was able to incorporate it into my journal. And you can see this now poking out the top. Um, to incorporate something I used to do in the past and then put it into my journal is, is really exciting for me, which I, I like that effect. And um, just challenging yourself to, to do something out of the ordinary, I think, is really important too. So here is the magic again, so you can actually see it in action again. Now you've seen how it's constructed, so you pull it out and you can see the watercolour image come up the top. I hope you enjoyed this video and this technique. Please give it a go, it is lots and lots of fun. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please come back again, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, bye.